Hey guys, welcome back to Curling Chronicles Paying It Forward. Today we are here with Olympians uh, Coach Mike and Coach Jess at the USA Curling Junior Competitive Camp uh, yes. in Glen, Minnesota. Thank you so much, coaches, for talking with us today. Of course, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This is exciting. Chuck and I definitely had an amazing time at this camp. Uh, we learned so much. And so tell us about the camp and how did you create uh, the idea, uh, come up with the idea to have a decent camp? great. So uh, it happened a couple of years ago when uh, we recognized that there was an opportunity for Coach Mike and I to, to come together and create opportunities for young athletes such as yourselves who might want to be competitive. And so with that, we, we took this camp and we took the resources that we had available and we we'll put it into this long week for, and offered it to you guys. Awesome. I think that for me, the the ability to see athletes and watch them grow uh, from year to year. Now, after our second, third year of doing this, it's just amazing to see the development that, that comes along, not only with, with the great coaching that we provide, but the, the efforts and the talents of the athletes that come here. It's uh, it's pretty cool for us, pretty special for us. Okay, so Coach Mike, most of us know that you've coached Tim Bear, who's won the national U18s uh, twice in a row, and you're also there. You're also uh, the USA Curling's national um, development coach, yeah. and you also teach too. Yes. So, how have you incorporated coaching Team A Bear and uh, to this program? Good, good, great question. And I think the idea of, of my background as an educator is really important to what I've been able to do as a coach. Um, I think the idea of helping develop athletes at all levels in Team A Bear was where you were at one point. Um, finding their passion and their dedication to a sport. And, sport that we love, right, to, to, sh to share curling with them has <clears throat> been something that I've really fell in, fallen in love with. And, and the guys, all being from my hometown, we continue to push ourselves to the highest level possible. And um, I give everybody as much instruction at these camps and through junior development as I give to Team A there. Because my point of view is the more I provide and the better everyone gets, all of our talent will push to the top. And, and, what we want is top level junior curlers who will actually become our top level Olympians in the future. How is running this program different than coaching Team A Bear? Yeah, I mean, dealing with four kids versus dealing with 50 to 60 kids and at camp, same, same thing, 50 to 60 kids. Um, team A Bears, uh, those boys are almost like my own kids at this point because I've worked with them so long, right? Um, I know how to communicate with them and to, to reach them at their level. And when you start with newer athletes or people that you don't know quite as well, it's reaching out to see what they really want with curling. Maybe they want to be a recreational curler, or maybe they want to go to the top of the podium. So uh, trying to meet everybody where they're at is really important. So Coach Chess, you are the uh, director for the Women's National Team and for the Juniors. Well, actually, my title's kind of changed over the last couple of years. So I'm actually more assistant working with Mike on the National Junior Development so him and I created that program and during COVID as a way that we can connect and still fill the gap for what our juniors and, and provide for our juniors some resources during that time when it was really challenging to get on the ice together. So we came up with this idea, put it on paper, put it out there, and, and I mean, the rest is kind of history. We've, yeah. we've had so much success with it. Uh, we, we get to connect with kids from the East Coast, from the West Coast, from Texas, and then and Mike does a fantastic job of helping the network and putting teams together. And, uh, we have success stories of athletes that have come together and, and done well at nationals thanks to the junior development program. So that's that's my role now. I'm kind of more the junior coordinator, helping with um, directing the camp uh, along with Coach Mike. We have a really good set of complementary skills together. So Coach Mike is an educator, understands kind of how to communicate with you guys at your age level where I'm still learning and uh, and I have a pretty good vision of what we want to provide to you guys and help you in whatever your competitive goals are and help you reach those. So how have you adapted to uh, from training the women's team to uh, the Right, so a, a lot of what our national women's teams are learning and doing and, and training, we take that and we 
kind of mold it into something that you guys can understand. So we're taking all the resources that our women's national teams have and our men's national teams and providing that to you guys. So that's our goal is to take what the top is getting and make sure that you guys are getting what kind of a, a little uh, example of what they what they have and then you can decide from there how far you want to take it and then reach out and, and find those skills or find uh, those resources and work with us to help provide those resources to you. So for people trying to go to uh, and figuring out which camp, curling camp to go to, uh, what would you like to say about the uh, USA Junior Development Camp and what they see? Yeah, that is a great question yeah. too. You guys are spot on. In, in camps that we provide in this country, um, to me, the more camps, the better, right? Like the ability to, to go to a camp, you're going to learn something from somebody and the way that they present it. So um, what we try to do here is slightly different than what other people try to do. Uh, but ultimately, the, people, the, the, the adults that are involved and that often get former athletes to come in and share like we did and the other camp has done as well. Um, and I think that that means a lot to you guys to see a, a Connor Kaufman or a Delaney Strauss come in um, or our current junior national ladies team who were helping at the junior uh, camp last week. Like those athletes, like we've done it, right? We've, we've been in those shoes, but we're aging. And, and as those young athletes are right in front of you, you watch them perform. It's really important to, to showcase those athletes too and their skill set. So, Coach Jess, what do you think makes you such a great coach for the juniors? I think a part of it is my experience, and I can relate to kids that are on the east and west coast where they come from a smaller club. My, my hometown, uh, we have a two-sheet club, and I was one of three, maybe four junior women there. So we had to be creative and, and how we formed our teams and how we work together and being kind of on an island. I'm from Alaska originally, so being up on our own and then only traveling out to get competition once a year, we had to figure out how to navigate that and again, learn how to find resources and develop. So I like to take a lot of my history and, and put that towards the future and, and help those kids that are out on those cusp areas as well um, and bring them into or of that curling hotbed, which is the Midwest, as it's turning into. Yeah. And we're finding some successes from kids that are coming in and they're working together to build up. So I guess that's probably more where I'm coming from is my background in history is helping drive me to coach you guys and make sure you're getting uh, the best help that we know how to give. So Coach Mike, uh, who should come to your camp? For example, if you're a new curler, is this camp for you? Um, we have that discussion every year, and I think when I put this camp plans together, we're ready to meet people from junior national medalists to beginning curlers. I prefer um, that range getting closer. Um, the further that range is, the harder it is for instructors to, to coach. It would be like me teaching a sixth grader and a second grader at the same level and trying to educate all of them. So it gets a little more difficult. So if you're a beginning curler, is it for you? We would certainly take that person if that's their drive, but I think we have other camps that can provide for a little more of a grassroots player, and we want to help develop kids that have, have a, uh, played for a few years and have a strong desire to play at national championships like you guys do. So Coach Jess, can you talk about the USA Junior Development Program? Uh, what is it, and who can participate? Uh, is it age minimum? Thanks for asking that. That's a great question. Uh, the U.S. Junior Development Program, National Junior Development Program, will start in October. And that might be a good spot for those grassroots players that are kind of coming in to see, maybe they want to feel out what competitive curling is all about. And so what we do with the NJDP is really give you kind of, again, that those snapshots. Like, okay, here's what our top athletes are doing, and we want to provide those resources to you, and you get to decide if that's where you want to go. So it's available, um, we have it open from 12 years old up to 19 or 20. Uh, it's a good kind of stepping stone from your club level uh, to, to start kind of branching out to that next competitive level. Uh, it's a good way of networking. So we do round table discussions where you be in a group, a small group to chat with people from the East Coast or from the Midwest and then you share each other's experiences. And so it's a great way to meet kids that have similar goals 
as you do, as well as learn and get to hear from our top athletes. Or sometimes we even bring in athletes from outside of our sport, from different sports, to come and share their experiences as well. So, yeah. Perfect. No, that's so as you guys know, there's a new, uh, the first new 21s uh, in your mixed doubles competition coming to Duluth this fall. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Have you guys ever played or coached mixed doubles? And how would you say uh, coaching mixed doubles is different? <laughs> it's different. Um, I have never coached, uh, although Kate has asked me to coach him at Mallory this year, so I'm excited to kind of learn a little bit more about that uh, and, and just see what that looks like. I love the idea of adding that discipline to curling. While it's not for me at 50 years old, <laughs> I think it's for our younger athletes, it's awesome. And it helps uh, our athletes connect with other players. Let's have a male and a female trying to learn from one another on the ice is great. Um, having two players instead of four actually doubles our field a little bit more. I just think there's a lot of positives to it. Uh, and I can't wait to see that conversation. It's, uh, you know, it's the weekend after Thanksgiving, so I'll be there. And I can't wait to see all the, the junior athletes there as well. Absolutely. And kind of to add to that a little fun fact, um, when mixed doubles was coming to the men's and women's field, I was a part of that when it started to unfold. I was still competing at that time, and I actually won nationals as a mixed doubles um, person. So won nationals, <laughs> and then they actually had another event that year to qualify for the world. So it was like a national championship and then a qualifier for the world champs. So yeah, one national as a mixed doubles competitor, it's a completely different game, a different mindset going from the four person to the two person. And then I also had the opportunity to coach uh, our wheelchair team who won a silver medal last year at the mixed doubles championship. And so having having that experience too, uh, it's, it's a touch game. Right? It's a touch game, it's, it's how you set up your rocks. It's very important to get your rocks in certain positions to get you set up towards that end goal. So kind of similar to the four person, but the strategy is definitely different. So Coach Mike or Coach Chess, um, as co-owners of the Junior Development Institute, uh, what do you appreciate most about each other? Um, I feel like I have all these ideas, and when we're on conference calls, I'm just spitting them out, and Jess is putting it into a into something that actually works. So I have a lot of ideas that I want to have work, but uh, her organization to be able to put it into um, what it looked like this week really helps me. Um, she has a more of a connection with some of our current athletes, um, so she's able to reach out. And you saw the plethora of amazing coaches and athletes that came this week, and that's all. What Jess is able to, to provide. So um, that really is exciting for me to um, not to try to do it solo and in our own silo, we really team together. And, well. yeah, and I think, uh, thanks, thanks, Coach Mike. Uh, we kind of found, found this bond pretty early on. Um, Coach Mike, again, being an excellent uh, communicator and a teacher and able to stand in front of a room and keep people entertained. Uh, <laughs> is, is really beneficial and I, I think like you said when we're on these calls we're kind of a, it, it's like he's we're both thinking it but he says it and then and, it, and it's great because the way he says it then I put it on paper and then we, we build it into this really wonderful thing and it's come together and it's a great dynamic plan is, and and want to continue. continue. <laughs> and when yeah. you guys are on the ice, or we're off, we're still talking about what is next year looks like. How, how do we make this better? Because each year it's grown, and I feel like we've done better for the athletes. And uh, next year we'll be the same. Yeah. So we're taking notes, and then the uh, the survey that comes out for you guys, please give us feedback. We love feedback and information, and what you're learning, and what you're interested in. That kind of helps us form what these programs. Are. So one of our biggest goals is to create, to make curling more widely known or mainstream yeah. in America. Um, we'd like to hear from both of you um, how you can make it more known uh, for kids and families. I'll start with the opposite, which is the biggest roadblock. And it's, if you like baseball, you can go and play baseball anywhere in America. And if you like curling, there's about hundred places where you can go and curl. So we're at a little bit of a, uh, you have to have ice, you have to have rocks, you have to have facilities. So that part makes it really difficult. I think that the best way to, to continue to promote is to within those communities to reach out and branch out to organizations and businesses and, and both Blaine where we're at, Chaska, the Twin Cities, um, and, and 
the Twin Cities as a whole have, have continued to have businesses come to learn to grow. So when you they see this or they see people talking about grilling, they're like, oh yeah, I tried that once. And what am I doing this winter? Maybe I'll join the league. And, and then that person grabs their friend and then we expand. And I think on the adult side, that's part of it. And on the junior side, yeah. what we're doing continue to have and with, um, with the camp, like those are ways to, to promote the game and to make people really love what they're doing. Kind of branching off that word of mouth piece is, is huge. Uh, I encourage all the juniors to try to bring a friend in with them this year. Like that would be pretty cool. Yes. I like, think you, you can get a friend or a couple friends to come down to the curling club and try it. I think that will help the sport continue to grow and evolve. So last but not least, what's a fun fact about yourself that not many people know outside of here? I got a new tattoo this year. I what? turned 50. I don't have any tattoos. And all right, we're gonna do, gonna do the reveal. Gonna oh. The yellow doesn't show right. very well, but. You Check got that it. out. He got the rings. Got the ring. There we go. So I am officially tatted. Officially branded. Yes. Yes. I also have the ranks. Let's see. Um, well, I, th I think my fun fact was that I was mixed up with the national champion. I can, I, can I go with that? Yes. Okay, let's go with that. And I have <laughs> the ranks as well. <laughs> so much. Yeah, thank you guys. It was great to have you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Let's keep up the great work. It's a great campaign. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Good job.